Hey guys, welcome back for our daily practice questions. As always, you know I'd like to get into my introduction and disclaimer before starting with our questions for today. So for those of you who are familiar with me, hey y'all. For those of you who are new here, welcome, welcome, welcome you guys. I'm Dr. Brittany Weinstock. I am a family nurse practitioner and I am the founder and CEO of The Nursing Studio. I provide resources, tools, review books, courses, videos, and more to assist nurses as well as nurse practitioners with success on boards as well as in practice. I've been doing this since 2015, assisting nurses and nurse practitioners internationally with exam success, and I would love to assist you as well. You know, I always give the disclaimer and reminder that we know there's no absolute in medicine, and we treat on a patient-by-patient -patient basis. So any of the questions that you see here are based off of the guidelines that are currently being tested on the ANCC as well as AAMP exam. Now, if I am doing any videos teaching on things that we currently do in practice, I will always say that so there's no confusion. But with that being said, let's get into question number one. Question number one states, a mother brings her two-year-old daughter into the office today with complaints of a sudden rash to her daughter's chest. The nurse practitioner asks if the patient has been sick, and the mother explains that a few days ago her daughter had a fever but has been doing well since. She states then this morning she knows this rash. Based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? Is it A, fifth disease? B, six disease, C, rubella, or D, rubiola. Take a moment and tell me what you got in the comments. All right, you know, I always recommend reading the stem of the question first so that it allows you to slow down and ensure that you're answering what is truly being asked. So here, then the question states, based on these findings, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? And you know, if we're diagnosing anything, we have to run it back and see what the assessment finding shows. So here, this mother brought in her two-year-old daughter into the office, complaining of a sudden rash. Nurse practitioner is doing her assessment, asks if the daughter has been sick. Mother states, yes, um, had a, a fever a few days ago, but she noticed this rash this morning. So I always tell you guys, you know, know those key identifiers, know the classics. You know what the pediatric rashes and um, integumentary uh, presentation, they all kind of look together. So you need to zone in on the things that uh, are the keys, you know. So here, the classic thing is that the daughter was sick, had a high fever, got better, and now she has this rash suddenly, right? So that is classic for what? Roseola, right? And what is Roseola also known as? B6 disease is the other name. So I always say Roseola, think of the S in Roseola. They were sick before and then the rash came, right? They were sick and then the rash came. And then the, also the S to remember that this is the one that is 6, S-I-X-T-H disease, right? So Roseola is your best answer. All right, trying to give you a little of the Britney's brilliance to help you tie it together. All right, so question number two, the nurse practitioner notes a macular papillar rash on a four-year-old patient. The mother states that she initially saw a rash on his face and watched to see if it would resolve, but she became concerned as she noticed that it started to spread down to his chest. And based on this presentation alone, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? Is it A, roseola, B, rubella, C, rubiola, or D, Kawasaki disease? Take a moment and tell me what you got. All right, so stem of the question states, based on this presentation alone, how should the nurse practitioner diagnose? So again, if we're diagnosing something, we have to run it back and see what the assessment findings are, right? So the nurse practitioner notes that this patient has a macular papillar rash, right? It's a four-year-old patient. The mother states that she initially saw this rash on his face. She was waiting to see if it resolved, but it didn't. It spread down to his uh, chest, right? So what is this classic for? Again, know the key identifiers with these pediatric um, rashes. And as I always tell y'all with derm, location, location, location. Pay attention to the location because that is also key to help you come with a diagnosis, right? But as I always tell y'all, B. Rubella, I say, Brittany's brilliant, think of the word bell in rubella, but think of a standard bell and how it looks, like a bell that you ring, 
you know, the top is narrow, you shake it, the bottom is wider. And that's how the macular papillar rash spreads from the, the top of that bell, that base, right? The small area, and it spreads down to the to the uh, trunk, which is the wider part of the bell, is how I picture it. I don't know if that helped y'all tie it together. You know, British brilliance is usually crazy, but I hope that y'all hear it so that you're testing that you will hear my voice helping you think you can be like, what that girl say? She said something crazy about a bell and something going from the top to the, the bottom. Yes. On the top of the bell, where it's narrow, is your face. And just like your trunk, your shoulders and everything, trunk go down, are wider like a bell shape. That's how the macular papillar rash always presents with rubella. Start for the face and spreads down to the trunk, okay? So this one is B, rubella. <clears throat> and then lastly, the nurse practitioner and MP student are discussing measles in the pediatric population. The MP student is inquiring about the other name that measles is known as. What is the best response by the nurse practitioner? Is it A, rubella, B, roseola, C, rubiola, or D, fifth disease? Take a moment and tell me what you got. And so this is another knowledge thing. So quickly, you should think to yourself, which one is also known as measles? And you should think rubiola, right? Rubiola is also called measles. So your best answer is C. Rubiola is also called measles, right? Roseola is also called sixth disease. Remember the S? Fifth disease is also that slap cheek. Think of the five fingers, erythema infectiosum. And then lastly, rubella is also known as German measles, right? So again, German measles, rubella. Sixth disease, roseola. Measles, rubiola. Erythema infectiosum, fifth disease, okay? All right, you guys, I hope you found this helpful. As always, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and share with whomever you may think may find this beneficial as well. But y'all know what to do. Make sure you meet me back here. If you need any of our resources, you can give us a call at 803-400-6864 or shoot us an email at thenursingstudio, the number one at gmail.com. We have review book options, the ebook and paperback, both linked in the bio of this channel for ease of access. We also have a self-paced course that's broken down by system with a non-clinical system as well for AAMP and ANCC to assist FMP and adult GRO reviewers. That is also linked in the bio. We have a five-week course that is in the description. The next one starts June the 10th. And then lastly, as I always tell y'all, if you are looking to do any of the one-on-one -on -one sessions, give us a call or shoot us an email so we can gauge what you need. And we'll go from there because this is strictly based off of what you need and it's customized and designed just for you. So you know what to do. Meet us back here. Make sure you meet me back. Happy studying. Bye, y'all.